Okay, so welcome. I've decided to start this channel and vlog a bit about my experience with breast cancer. So I was diagnosed in June 2019. I never really thought about sharing too much about it because I thought it was going to be a little bit straightforward and I thought okay I'll I'll have my chemo, I'll have my surgery and then it will all be done. What what would anyone want to know about that? But what's happened throughout is that there's just I've had so many setbacks, one after another after another after another and the finish line for like finishing treatment just seems to be getting further and further and further away and then I got some quite awful news last Friday which has changed everything um, so yeah I thought why not start a vlog now and start showing people what it's really like another thing is that on my Instagram a lot of people always comment oh you're so positive well done you're doing so well you're so positive but they don't see a lot of the behind the scenes like I don't post that much on Instagram I might post a picture once a month if that and all you see is that one photo and you think that I'm doing very well being very strong but yeah this weekend just gone was awful lots of tears I'm doing better today and yeah so I just want to share a bit more of the reality than what gets shown on um, Instagram um, so for this video I think I'm going to speak a little bit about my diagnosis and then my treatment that I've had so far and where I'm at now so last year I got to Australia in March, March the 13th 2019 and when I was, the day that I arrived I was in the shower and I was brushing my hand under my armpit like this that's how I always wash, a bit of soap I was brushing my hand under my armpit like this and I felt a lump above my, like above my nipple and it felt quite small, like a pea, firm and at first I thought, oh my god it's cancer and then I said to myself, you are such a drama queen, of course it's not cancer, you're so young, just forget about it. So for three months I stayed in Australia and I did keep an eye on the lump and I, could no I did notice it was getting bigger and then it started to get a little bit painful. On like a scale of 0 to 10, it was like a 0 0.5 or a 1, it wasn't pain but it was noticeable, I knew that something isn't right. So one of my very good friends, Chloe, told me that I had to go to the, the hospital to get it checked out. Um, there was a little bit of a back and forth, they were, the hospital couldn't understand why I was going there to get treated, but where I was living, Bundaberg, in Queensland, um, there's such a shortage of doctors, so it was impossible to get a GP appointment or it was in June that I was trying to get an appointment the next available appointment was August so yeah I managed to get seen at the hospital and they weren't too concerned the doctor that looked at it she did a physical examination and it was really painful I was like oh, that really hurts and she said okay look because it's painful it makes me think that it's nothing malignant um, it's probably just hormonal so I'm gonna get you in for an ultrasound on the Monday this was a Friday night and she said look don't worry um, if it was anything to worry about I could get the ultrasound team in over the weekend but I'm not concerned so let's just do an ultrasound on Monday when the team is back in um, so I went I had the ultrasound and then they said oh I think we want to do a biopsy on this lump nothing to worry about don't worry um, I had the biopsy done and very quickly the next day I got the result over the phone saying you need to come back to the hospital and I said why and they said because it's cancer um, so that was a massive shock 
being told that yeah this lump that I thought was probably hormonal the doctor thought it was hormonal is now cancer I think that was on a Tuesday and then I went back to the hospital on the Wednesday and I thought it was going to be very straightforward all throughout this whole thing I've always thought that it's just going to be straightforward I thought um, okay I'll go to the hospital maybe I can get booked in to have the lump removed and then I'll just carry on with my travels. Maybe I don't even need to tell my parents. I hadn't told them about the lump. Putting some hand cream on. My hands are so dry. Um, but it turns out, well, the doctor said, no, you're going to need treatment. You're going to need chemotherapy, possibly radiotherapy. You're going to need surgery. And you need to decide where you want to have it done. So if you pick to have it in Australia, you're going to have to stay in Australia. So I said, no, I'm going home. Um, and then I got home on the Friday, so yeah, I was diagnosed on the Tuesday, back in England on the Friday. I had to go and see an oncologist here, and then they put like a treatment plan together, which was for chemotherapy, um, and then surgery. So the breast cancer that I have is triple negative, which means that it's not um, created or impacted by hormones. There are three other types of breast cancer, ER, PR and HER2, so oestrogen, progesterone and HER2 is like a protein and the hormone ones can be treated with hormone therapy but because mine is triple negative it won't respond to a hormone therapy. Um, so the treatment plan for someone with triple negative is also dependent on the size of the tumour um, if the tumour is small then they'll usually do surgery and remove it straight away but mine was too big, it was bigger than two centimetres so in the first instance then they have to do chemotherapy to try and shrink the tumour and then go in and do the surgery so I had my chemotherapy, it was meant it started in July 2019 and it was meant to finish at the beginning of December but I had a lot of problems during my chemo with my bloods being too low. But your white blood cells and your platelets need to be at certain levels otherwise yeah, you're at risk of infection if you haven't got enough white blood cells and I kept being anemic so I wasn't getting enough oxygen transported around my body, I was really breathless a lot of the time and it's because the chemo had made me anemic. Um, so the chemotherapy ended up dragging on, it finished at the beginning of January, I just had lots and lots of delays and setbacks but I was like that's fine, it's okay. Um, I'm going to have my surgery. Surgery is if you've got the BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene then you can have a double mastectomy done to stop the cancer from coming back in the future. Because I'm triple negative they obviously thought right you might be, um, be, be carrying BRCA1 or BRCA2. So I had my genetic testing done and it came back that I didn't have those genes and then I had some further testing done and yeah there was nothing abnormal on my genes so that meant that I couldn't have a mastectomy and I would just have a lumpectomy which is where they cut out just that lump um, so I had my lumpectomy in February and I was told that I would probably need radiotherapy afterwards which was fine, I was expecting that, so then I knew, right, I've got my chemotherapy done, I'm going to have my lumpectomy, then my radiotherapy, and then I'll be done. Um, I went for my results after my lumpectomy, because when they remove a tumour, they need to check that they've got normal cells all the way around the tumour, then they know that they've got all of the tumour and they haven't left anything behind. Um, but I, went, I had my lumpectomy at the beginning of February, I think it was the 5th, 5th? I think it was the 5th. I had it on the 5th and then went back on the 28th of February for the results. 28th? Yeah, I think it was the 28th. For the results and I was told that they didn't have good margins and I'd need further treatment 
oh, further surgery. So I was booked in to have a mastectomy this time, just on one side, so they're going to remove all the breast tissue. Um, and that was booked in for the beginning of April this year. And then we all know what's happened this year, so coronavirus has happened. Um, I was able to have the surgery, I had my mastectomy, that went ahead, but I was told because of the coronavirus I, wa I wasn't allowed to have immediate reconstruction, which initially I was terrified about, just waking up and there being a scar and not having anything there really terrified me, but I just wanted the cancer gone because in the time between having the lumpectomy in February and then going for the mastectomy, I could feel another lump there, like it didn't feel right. I thought at first that it was just scar tissue from where I'd had the lumpectomy, but then when I went back for my mastectomy results afterwards, I was told that and they, they did find another tumour, so three and a half centimetres it was, had grown between February and April. And something else had changed on the hormone test which worried my oncologist and he said to me, right, I need to send you for a CT scan. So last week I went for a CT scan um, on the Tuesday and that Tuesday evening he phoned me up and said, mm, something's come up in your lymph nodes, we need to do a PET scan. So I went for a PET scan last Thursday and the PET scan is one where you get injected with this radioactive stuff and then you have to sit by yourself away from people for an hour whilst the radioactiveness goes around your body and it helps the doctors to see what's happening in your body on the cellular level because all the cells sort of pick up the radio radioactiveness that's floating around. Um, so I had that scan done on Thursday and then on Friday I went for my results and the doctor said, so he told me obviously I wouldn't be expecting good news because if it was good news he could have told me it on the telephone but just the fact that I'd been called into the hospital during coronavirus wasn't a good sign and I guess I knew that. Um, and he said that, you know, this tumour, it grew straight back after the chemotherapy finished. So when I went for my lumpectomy, there was a tumour there, even though the chemo had got rid of it. But yeah, it grew back. Then it was removed and then it grew back again in between the two surgeries. So it's acting like in a very aggressive, unusual way that even he is quite surprised by. And the scans, the PET scans, the CT scans, show that now it's spread into my lymph nodes. So, that was a bit of a blow. Because before it, it had all been contained in the breast and I didn't need to, I wasn't too worried about it spreading anywhere, but now it's in the lymph nodes. Originally there was talks about having surgery to remove any bits that need be but now that's not an option, so I guess it's more in the lymph nodes than the doctor was anticipating. Um, and then he said usually the next step would be to put me forward for clinical trials to trial drugs that aren't available on the NHS yet, but because of the coronavirus, all of the clinical trials are shut. And he said, as a family, we need to do, sort of decide how we want to proceed because I need to see a specialist, probably going to need specialist treatment that isn't available on the NHS. Mm, so that was a bit, yeah, quite a blow. All along, I've just been thinking that I can see the finish line, I'm going to finish my chemotherapy, I'm going to have my surgery, then I'm going to have radiotherapy. So I was meant to start radiotherapy on the 11th of May and I asked my doctor last Friday, so am I still starting radiotherapy? And he says, no, 
um, it could make the lymph nodes flare up even more and he said to me a lot is going to happen between now and the 11th of May so what's today the 4th the 4th so yes that's the where I am diagnosis treatment so far hasn't really worked and now looking for something else so my oncologist has referred me to some specialist he's sort of putting a packet together of all my details all my medical records and yeah giving that to people that he knows i've contacted my gp and said i want to be referred to the charing cross hospital as i'm hopeful that they might have something there that we don't have out here out here I don't live that far from London <laughs> I just live outside West London so yeah it's good that we're close to a big city and hopefully there are more options in other hospitals um, so yeah at the moment it's, it's quite scary because I don't have any treatment I'm not on any treatment right now it's spread into my lymph nodes and I'm not having any treatment to stop it from continuing to spread and there's no like treatment plan set out I'm just waiting for someone to come up with an idea hopefully this week i'll see a few specialists like i'm hoping to see someone at bart's that's where my doctors referred me to hoping to see someone at charing cross which is where i've requested to see someone my dad's been on the case to the royal marsden so hopefully like this week I might have three three appointments get three different opinions and then figure out the next steps so yeah I think I might do a few other videos about specific things and then just video this journey as I go because at, at the moment it's now in like no man's land don't know what's happening it's not very normal it's not the normal like care plan that I thought I would be receiving it's all just a bit unknown so yeah I hope you enjoy following this story all right bye